Hello, so in this little piece, what we're just going to look at is fitting a nonlinear function, um, a diffusion function, uh, and how we go about linearizing it so that we can do our linear regression. So um, if we take diffusion, diffusion goes as d is equal to d naught e to the x to the minus q over rt. And uh, that is, it looks something like diffusivity goes up with temperature, something like that. And what Divya did in her paper on uh, looking at the diffusion of molybdenum in nickel was uh, measured that diffusivity at a couple of temperatures of interest. Um, that is between 1050 and 1225 degrees C. Now, what you'd really like to do is find d naught, and more especially Q, the activation energy, because that has a sort of physical meaning, how easy it is for atomic jumps to happen. Um, and the problem is, is you, you could try and fit the curve here, but it would be nicer if you could turn it into a straight line such that you could fit it. And we can do that pretty easily, right? Uh, we can go uh, log d is equal to log d naught, where I'm using log to the base 10, minus q over rt times log of e. Now, uh, log of e, uh, log to the base 10 of e, is also equal to uh, 1 over ln 10, if you like. Um, and so is equal to log e. So you can say that log d is equal to log d naught minus q um, over r ln 10 times 1 over t. So this looks like a y equals c plus mx, where m is equal to minus q over r log 10, um, and x is 1 over t. So we could plot this instead as being uh, log of d that we measure, those are our y's, against 1 over t, and then we would have an, uh, a set of data points that went something like this, and we could try and fit a best straight line whose gradient would be equal to minus q over r log 10. And since we know the gas constant r and we know log 10, we found q. Very nice. Um, and uh, I guess one or two things to uh, comment upon is that here, uh, when we have an, an uncertainty in our gradient, it'll create a big uncertainty in our log d naught. But practically speaking, that may not be a huge concern because the diffusivity of molybdenum in nickel at very low temperatures, you know, 10 kelvins, will be practically zero. So it's only really of interest as a problem where we're actually in a range where we can measure decent amounts of diffusion happening. That is in the range of sort of 800 to 1200 degrees or something, which is fairly close to the range that was measured. Um, above, go too high, 1300 or something, and the, the, the nickel would melt. Right? So it's not really that much of a concern beyond that for a dilute alloy of molybdenum in nickel. Um, so what we do in the next segment is we set that up and solve that in Excel, um, and that'll be uh, quite nice. And we'll make some comments on that when we've done that. So I'll see you for the uh, Excel session. Hello, so uh, this is the Excel file for uh, fitting some diffusion uh, parameters. <coughs> so here we've got a log D um, uh, versus 1 over T for our data from Divya's paper um, about the diffusivity of moly in nickel, or molybdenum in nickel. And, uh, it's just the same as the previous linear regression. If we, uh, here's our data, uh, T and D. Um, so we take uh, T in Kelvin, so I've added 273 here, uh, and then in inverted that. Uh, I've taken the log of D. Um, then I've computed my uh, X minus X mean, having worked out my mean. Mean is D16 down here. Um, I've worked out Y times X minus X bar. Um, x minus x bar squared, uh, I've taken my residual compared to my value, and I've done the sums and, as we have done before. Um, and that means that I get a, a value for um, uh, my activation energy Q, I should make that on the right hand side, uh, and my intercept of my value of C. Um, and then when I plot that, that's my straight line.
um, and that gives me an activation energy of a, a, something like 220 plus or minus 10 kilojoules per mole. Now you'll notice here that the uncertainty in uh, the intercept uh, is actually quite large. Um, uh, so this, this value Q is in kilojoules per mole, I've, I've divided by the 19.14 for the log D, uh, uh, so log 10 times R. Um, but you'll, you'll notice here that the uncertainty in C is quite big, um, especially given that that's a log. Um, that's half an order of magnitude uncertainty. Um, and that's because uh, when 1 over t is 0, that's t infinity, that's way off of our chart, way away from our data. Uh, you know, our data goes from 0.0065 to 0.0075, and we're projecting all the way back to 0. Um, so our uncertainty in the, the pre-exponential term, our d0, is going to be rather large. Um, but our Q uncertainty is something like 5% there, it's 220 plus or minus about 10. Um, and the comment would be, uh, when we do repeated measurements, uh, or different groups do different measurements of Q, typically we find for diffusion data that we would, probably this number would be something like 200 to 250 kilojoules per mole would be measured. Um, that is, the real uncertainty is probably plus or minus 20 or 30 um, when we do sample to sample variation. So this uncertainty is the statistical fitting uncertainty. It's not the um, real uncertainty that you'd find on repeated measurement. It's just the stats based on this data. And the other thing to notice here is that um, doing these measurements is rather laborious, it takes rather a lot of effort. So a paper consisting of five measurements, that's quite a lot of work. Um, and still that results in a, a fair degree of scatter um, and so it's quite difficult to do uh, good measurements of Q. Um, uh, another comment would be in terms of temperature this is in a range of temperatures from 1000 to 1225 uh, 1050 to 1225, quite a restricted range of temperatures if you went down to 800 degrees C it would take a very long time to generate a big enough diffusion profile in order to measure uh, the diffusivity if you go much above 1225, you start getting into uh, a very high temperature where everything's moving around and it's recrystallizing. So you actually only can only make measurements in a fairly restricted range of temperatures. Um, but on the other hand, when you're at low temperatures, nothing will diffuse anywhere, so it's not very interesting. And when you're at high temperatures, the alloy melts. So it's actually only in a restricted range of temperatures where it, the question is interesting as well. So we don't need to worry too much about our uncertainty in in where this projects off to the axis because we're only going to use it in about this range. Um, so that's how that works. Now the other thing um, in a log-log plot is uh, when you do x plus an amount and x minus an amount, when you do x minus amount, take the log of that, you'll get a very different error bar plus or minus. And there's two ways to deal with that. You can actually plot it x plus the uncertainty, take the log of that, x minus the uncertainty, take the log of that and plot different size error bars, that's one way. Um, that's the way Excel would tend to do it, for instance. Or you can say that the uncertainty in uh, in log x is uh, the uncertainty over x, and that's not, and then plot the same error bar plus minus on the log plot, and that's what people normally do. Um, and which is better is actually a matter of debate, and I, I wouldn't take a view either way. Um, but uh, there are genuinely debates about which one is the right thing to do. Um, Often you will see, rather than people plotting it on a log scale like this here, um, they'll use a uh, paper that goes 10 to the minus 15, 10 to the minus 14, with different gradations of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, squeezing up as you go across the page. Um, and that ma just makes it easier to read visually by eye, rather than talking about what is minus 15 here on here anyway. Um, and again, either is okay, but they'll both be the same points in the same places. It's just a case of how you plot the axis. Uh, so that's it for a diffusion fit uh, for doing a log-log plot, or this is a log-semi-log plot. Um, that's log on the y-axis and the x-axis is normal. Or in fact, it's inverse. Weird, huh? Um, so that's all fine. Uh, so uh, that, that's it, really. Uh, and we'll talk about now uh, generalised linear least squares uh, for nonlinear uh, models. Uh, so see you next time.